Hey everybody. So today we are going to look at um, a paratext analysis of the girl who was plugged in by James Tiptree Jr. All right. So James Tiptree Jr. is the nom de plume for Alice Hastings Bradley Sheldon. Uh, we learned a little bit about her in class um, through the biography. She has a super interesting history. But what's really important about her for this particular presentation is that she is a new wave um, writer in science fiction, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. So the piece that we were given to read um, by Tiptree was The Girl Who Was Plugged In. Um, its first publication is in the New, Di new Dimensions um, anthology. And that appears in 1973 and 1974. It then appears in Warm Worlds and Otherwise, which is um, a collection of short stories that Tiptree puts together herself in 1975. Um, and then it appears essentially on its own um, as The Girl Who Was Plugged In, and this comes up in 1989. And then finally, we're gonna talk a little bit about some fan art that I found online um, that is pretty recent, 2019, so last year sometime. It is not an official cover, but I would like to maybe pose a couple questions about what it means um, as we've progressed through the interpretations of um, the girl who was plugged in and how it's presented. So the first thing I want to talk about and not stay too long on um, is the first time that the girl who was plugged in um, appears. It's in New Dimensions, and the cover is by Robert Silverberg. Now, this cover you can see is very, very indicative of the new wave movement. Um, 1973, 1974, smack dab during this time period. Um, you'll see that this is edited by Robert Silverberg. Um, he is a well-known sci-fi author. And the reason I want to bring him up is whenever it's published again, whenever the, um, the girl who's plug plugged in is published again, Robert Silverberg writes an interesting intro that we're gonna talk about. So the image here, the cover art, you can tell it's very fluid and it is a drastic move away from hard science, from space, galaxies, um, spaceships. You don't see any of that here for sci-fi. In fact, um, you look and it has a very psychological emphasis. Now, I don't know if this cover particularly was for um, the girl who is plugged in, because there are many short stories in this uh, New Dimensions 3 collection, but it kind of fits. Um, you have this beautiful girl, and then inside of her head, you have this ugly other woman who seems to be controlling the thoughts. Um, this is a very abstract yet concrete image. It's not overly sexualized, but it's still very beautiful. So the next time that the girl who was plugged in, appears is in this short story anthology that was published um, by or written by James Tiptree Jr. It only has 12 short stories by James Tiptree Jr. The cover art is by Don R. Smith and this appears in 1975. Um, so it is also published during the height of the new wave movement. Um, you can see that it is very colorful, it is vibrant, and it's also abstract. You can see that the um, artist here is experimenting with things that are familiar, yet very nightmarish. Um, you see you do have a woman over here, and she's very familiar. You have a dinosaur over here, and that's relatively familiar, but the body has been, has been warped. Um, you have these dinosaur figures here. And they're headless, um, almost weaponized is what they look like. Again, you have this, you know, head that's being controlled by these bugs and then this faceless man um, that is writing. So it's familiar um, and yet it is really provocative in the way that it is colorful and unique, nightmarish, kind of abstract, a little bit weird. Um, which is what New Wave is sort of pushing into. Um, you can also see here that it mentions that it includes the award-winning short story, The Girl Who Was Plugged In. 
Um, and then you have a couple other pieces to this that are really important. Now, you can tell that this is trying to attract a different kind of sci-fi reader. You're looking at somebody who is going to be more interested in the psychological aspect, the, the weird sort of inner space aspect versus the spaceship, um, galactical sort of um, space wars kind of thing. And then something that I'd like to mention that you don't see on this cover, um, but is included in the paratext of this text, which is a forward or a um, introduction by that Robert Silverberg. And what is really interesting is when this was published in 1975, he wrote in his article or introduction, Who is Tiptree? What is he? Um, that the theory that Tiptree was female was absurd and that no one could, no female could write stories like this, um, which is really ironic because Tiptree indeed is a woman. Um, and so that forward or introduction by a well-known sci-fi um, sci writer, uh, I think also appeals to a different kind of audience, somebody who is going to be more um, interested in the sci-fi movement. Okie dokie. So the next time that this appears, um, where a cover appears, is in 1989. Now we are out of the new wave movement and we are kind of smack dab in the cyberpunk um, era. Now cyberpunk has its roots in new wave, so they're not drastically different. Um, cyberpunk, however, is a bit bolder and perhaps maybe a little sexier. It focuses on artificial intelligence, cybernetics, and it can be a little bit more dystopian, which is interesting because the girl who was plugged in definitely deals with artificial intelligence and cybernetics. It's certainly dystopian. The world is definitely not a, um, is not a beautiful one that we'd like to be a part of. And cyberpunk can also be very critical or mistrusting of mega corporations. Um, and the girl who was plugged in, though it was written in the height of New Wave, definitely foreshadows a lot of these themes um, and a lot of these ideas that are part of cyberpunk. Now, in 1989, you can tell this cover has been more sexualized than the previous covers. Um, you have a woman here who is obviously in a very sexualized pose. Her hair is wet. Um, her eyes are kind of you know, dewy and bedtime eyes, um, pillow eyes. I don't know what that's called, but you can definitely tell that she has been overly sexualized. She has no clothes on. Her breasts are barely covered. And so you are attracting maybe a more male audience, um, whereas previously it wasn't really geared towards men, but just sci-fi readers in general. Now, behind the beautiful, sexy woman, is a shrouded dark figure. Um, before reading this, you might think that it is an evil presence. Um, after reading the text, you realize that this is not an evil pre pre presence. It is actually just our poor protagonist who is controlling this gorgeous body. Um, you will also see that the font is bolder and that it mentions that the author of The Girl Who Was Plugged In is also the author of Brightness Falls from the Air. And so it's reaching a reader that might already be familiar with it in a very different way. You also notice that it again mentions that it is a Hugo Award winner. And so the paratext here is really trying to establish its um, credibility and trying to establish um, a a place within the cyberpunk world yeah and so i just really think that this one's really interesting because if you look and i can go back here this is not sexualized at all um it's colorful it's interesting it's very 70s okay um and then if you move forward this is more minimalistic but it's bolder in a way and it, again, it is definitely more sexualized, which is reflective of the cyberpunk and the 1989 time period. And then the cover is by Peter 
Gunyas, I can't pronounce that, um, but he is actually a pretty well-known cover artist. And if you look him up on ISFDB, he has illustrated a ton of other sci-fi covers. Okay, so this is not technically a cover for the girl who was plugged in. This is fan art that is on sale on society6.com and it was created in 2019 by this artist. I'm definitely not going to even try and say her name because I will totally butcher it. Um, the reason I wanted to bring this up is we saw something from the 70s and then we saw something from the late 80s and you don't see the girl who is plugged in really appear in cover art or popular art um, until this 2019. There are some films, um, some adaptations, but this 2019 I found really interesting because it, it is drastically different from what we see previously. Um, this girl is definitely nowhere near as sexualized as this girl. And she is not as um, vague or abstract as this girl. And she's not as abstract as this sort of idea here. Um, in fact, if you look at her, she's pretty, um, she's pretty literal. I mean, you see the control mechanisms on her heart, on her neck, her face. She's surrounded by wires. She's plugged in. But the colors are really interesting here. And so what I'd kind of like to start, if anybody wants to reply to this, um, what do you think this says about our current sci-fi culture in 2019? Or what does it say about our literary culture in 2019 that this is the kind of art that is produced over the same text that this art and to an extent this artwork and this as well um, the same novella short story whatever you want to call it inspired each of these images um, but each image is unique to its particular decade so let me know what you think and if you have any questions, just hit me up on the post. Thank you very, very much.